Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about the shot arsenal or how to get a couple of extra shots in your, in your game. So uh, the last video I made was about those intermediate player mistakes and I mentioned how to, you know, try to add in a couple more shots. I'm gonna show you five today. So I'm gonna show you five extra shots that you can do. Try to add this stuff into your game. It'll make a difference. All right, let's do it. All right, number one, I love this shot. It's so cool. I call it the chip. You could call it like the forehand roll or like the off pace lob. I call it the chip because I come from golf and that's what makes sense to me. But basically it's an off pace shot that you do on the center line that goes in between your opponents, but it's higher than your shoulder. So shoulder high, let it fly, right? So what happens is when you hit this kind of shot, your opponents let it go, but in reality, it's gonna be in because it's off pace. So it's just really fun. I love doing this shot. So if I'm dinking back and forth here and she kind of gives me a high one over here. I can do something like that where notice how it was it was shoulder high or around there, right? So like the instinct is to let it go, but it ends up being in. If you can kind of try to roll, kind of push your wrist forward and roll it like that, you'll get a little bit of top spin on it and it'll drop down at the very end. Okay. Like that. Really, really fun shot to do. Hilarious when it when it turns out. One guy who's very good at this is Matt Goble. Matt's got a sick little forehand. Also, Tyson McGuffin's very good at that as well. So watch those guys and you'll be able to see it in action. All right, number two, the inside out forehand. Oh man, this shot is awesome. It's so much fun. So when you start to get better in pickleball, your smashes and your volleys at the net will become a little bit more predictable. People are starting to get those balls back amazingly. So one way to really trick them up is to kind of fake them out and do what's called the inside out forehand. Let me show you what it looks like. So if I'm right here at the kitchen line, I could easily just smash a ball by just going like that, right? Or if it was a little bit higher, I could just hit it right down the center line and that's great. But what a lot of people are starting to do is they're starting to move their position over to where they can try to get that. So to fake them out, what we're gonna do instead is the inside out forehand. And what that is, is we're gonna push our wrist forward and let that paddle lag behind and the ball will go to the right. So she hits it up high for me. I'll show you. Like that. So notice how I let that wrist go forward and the ball goes to the right. Like that, really cool little shot. And if you can really do it, really get a good angle on it you can actually let that lag behind so much that it hits almost on the side of the kitchen which is even more fun that's the inside out forehand all right number three the cross court lob this shot is great. I have a friend who can do this very well and I'm always in awe when she's able to do this. Now, let me take you back to geometry class. Remember the Pythagorean theorem? Remember how that diagonal, the hypotenuse was always longer than the other, than the other edge? Um, that's, that actually applies to pickleball. If I go straight down the line here, it's gonna be shorter than if I were to go cross court diagonally, right? So what happens is, is because you have more space to lob the ball, it's gonna bounce further out, especially if you can get some topspin on it. So what's really deadly is if you get the ball over here in this corner and you're able to lob it cross court. The other thing is that in really high level play, whenever you get a ball over here, the person in front of you is gonna to try to Ernie. That's great. So now that takes them out of the picture of being able to get that lob. And now this person has to run directly behind to get it. So you get, a little short one, just go like that, get a little bit of topspin on it, hit it right back there to that corner. There's no way they're getting that shot. There's no way. So good, so much fun too. Okay, number four, the cross court third. Now, this can be a drop or a drive or whatever, but cross court third is really effective. The reason is because it, it tends to pull their position out and it makes it more likely that they're gonna pop up the ball, okay? so. You're gonna do exactly what you do on all your thirds, the same kind of stroke, but you've gotta hit it a little bit harder because again, it's that diagonal. When you have that diagonal, it's gonna be, the distance is gonna be longer. So 
What you can also do is sort of cut across your body and then it'll put a little bit of side spin on the ball. Makes it just even more fun to do. Okay, so here I am, ready? Like that, cross court. Okay, number five. Now, I want to warn you ahead of time, this is an extremely difficult shot. Out of all the shots, this is probably one of the hardest, and that is the cross-court top spin forehand dink, okay? So let me just show you what it looks like real quick. And the point of the shot is to get top spin on it, like that. The trick to the shot is to hinge the wrist like this, make sure it's hinged and come straight up with your elbow. That's really it. Easier said than done, trust me. The shot is not easy. It's a little bit easier to do on volleys. Do you notice how, notice how that ball popped up? That's the topspin, that's what the topspin does. So, up, come straight up on the ball. Not easy to do. Way easier to do on the volleys. Notice, see how high that, that ball went? That's the top spin. That's why you want to get top spin on some of these shots because it'll make the ball go higher and then you can start to do something with it. Hinge the wrist, come up. Man, that's hard, but keep practicing that. That's a really, really nice shot to do. If you're not putting a lot of spin on these cross court dinks, it's just gonna be easy to, for them to get it over. So that's the kind of, that's just sort of like the beginning of your journey when it comes to putting spin on your cross court dinks. Well guys, those are five extra shots that you can add to your shot arsenal. I hope that was helpful. You wanna try to have as much as many shots as you can in your arsenal because it's gonna make you unpredictable, like I said in the intro. So try those out, let me know what you think. Head on over to picklewallkitchen.com. I got a lot more stuff, articles, all the videos are on there, podcasts, all that sort of stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.